So just the other day, I released an episode of News Radar where I talked about some additional changes, some driver updates that were there for Windows 11 on Surface Duo. Now these driver updates were there to add basically a whole bunch of stuff for the various sensors on Surface Duo, things like the hinge angle sensor so that it would know to what degree the thing was opened or closed or flipped all the way around. Rotation, which is also very, very important when it comes to a mobile device like this. I mentioned all this stuff and then I said, you know, I hadn't installed it yet because it wasn't actually released to be installed. Well, it is now released to be installed. I have installed it. So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at what that means. How is it actually functioning now on the device? And it's kind of going to be weird and complicated for me to show you because everything is still not working super duper well. It is good progress, but more progress will of course need to be made. So some of this is going to be me showing you firsthand, some of it is going to be me showing you stuff from Gus himself because some of the things I can't show you because I don't have the programs installed to show you the data, he has posted videos and he can in fact show. So first things first, let's just look at what was added. You see all these things here? All these accelerometers, compasses, gyrometers, gyrometer? I don't know. Gy I'm going to go with gyrometer. You can read all of these sensors. There's like, I think 26 of them. Hinge, angle, posture, flip, proximity, on and on and on and on and on. So this is a really, really substantial update here for this thing. It's, it's a lot. So as I boot my Duo into Windows 11 right now, let's take a look at what Gus actually posted as sort of a precursor here. So he posted this video here. So here's the device being flipped. And you may be wondering to yourself, well, nothing's happening, you know, whatever, it's flipping, but nothing's happening. Well, what's important here is that the, the, the app he's actually running here is actually paying attention to if the device has been flipped. So Windows doesn't know what to do with the fact that the device is flipped around. Windows doesn't care because there's nothing for Windows to do with this information. However, this program he's got running uh, does know what to do with it. So it's probably hard to see here, but right there it says flip detected. Okay, so it's just the fact that it, it it's aware that it flipped. This is a similar thing. So it hinges at work. Watch this little circle here. As he closes it, you can see that it's reading the appropriate amount of hinge being moved around. So again, it's not that Windows really knows what to do with this information necessarily, but it's there for it to use if eventually it can use it for something. And you can also probably see here that when he rotates it, this screen rotates, this one does not. And that kind of mirrors the experience that I'm having with my device after installing uh, uh, this new driver update on here. So let's go to the overhead camera and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are on Windows 11. And if I try to rotate the thing, you're gonna see that nothing, nothing's happening. So first when I did this, I was like, oh man, did I, did I mess up the update process or something? Did I screw something up? Well, I discovered something here. If you go into your display settings, and you scroll down here, this is gonna be really hard to read because of all the graphical glitches here, but it says rotation lock. You see that right there in the middle, rotation lock. So I was like, oh, maybe I need to toggle it. So I toggled it off and I toggled it back on and I thought maybe that's it. No, that's not it either. But then I did something kind of random. I went up here where you see the two displays. Yes, it does literally see it as two displays. You can actually move them around if you want to. You can, um, where's the button to identify them here? Here we go. Identify them one and two. It treats it just like dual monitors. I thought, what if I, what if I do this to, to, what if I go to duplicate displays? So I did that. I duplicated them, and now watch. Now whenever I rotate it, something happens. This rotates, this doesn't really know what on earth to do, but it, rotation is definitely there, okay? Windows definitely knows that the device is rotating. Now does it know necessarily exactly what to do with that information? seems like maybe it doesn't. I don't think I've messed up anything in this process, but it just seems to me like Windows just doesn't really know properly what to do with a dual screen device that has just rotated. Maybe that's something that will get hopefully improved as time goes on. I do want to point out that, you know, you can close the thing and then when you open it back up, you should get your lock screen. There it is. And it's duplicated. So you're getting the lock screen twice in this instance. If I go back to extending the display, so it's two different monitors and I open it back up, you should just get the lock screen on one. You swipe up and you're in. So there's a lot of good improvements here. Okay. The fact that all of these sensors are now actually reading correctly 
is really, really impressive. Now, what does that mean for the actual usability of the device? Well, at the moment, not a ton. I think the bigger thing that it speaks to is just the fact that Gus is continuing to make uh, so much progress and in such a short amount of time that it should give you hope that down the line, maybe some months from now, that it might be actually something that is relatively usable. Personally, on my uh, wish list of things is probably just fixing some of these graphical glitches. I know that's asking a lot. It is my understanding that he is effectively taking a driver for a Surface Pro X, which runs a heavily modified version of a Snapdragon 855, and he is taking that graphics driver and then to some degree, I don't know if it's a ton or if it's a little, probably it's a ton, and modifying it to work on this device. So again, we're asking an awful lot here, but if there's something that I would like to see, it's those graphical glitches because that is makes it difficult to, to do anything even in testing on the thing. But even still, I'm gonna take whatever we can get, right? It seems to me that what he's doing is he's kind of giving everything at a nice baseline. He's building the foundation of the house, right? Before you start building the house itself. So there you go, a really big update. That's kind of what it's like, where it's at. Guys, I've also been thinking about how I can make sort of my own companion video to the instructions on how to do this. So the instructions, I'll, I'll, I'll put them in the, the, in the description again. The instructions to do this are long and they are somewhat complicated and they're somewhat difficult. So perhaps what I'll do is I'll kind of just walk through these steps and talk about how it worked for me and maybe give some tips that might have made my life easier and then during that process I can explain the driver update process as well. I've also got some shortcuts that I have made that make my life quite a bit easier. So rather than having to type in commands to boot into Windows 11 or to go into mass storage mode to do the driver updates or simply to just get into ADB, I have shortcuts that do these things for me. So perhaps I'll show those things as well. Maybe that's something that'll happen uh, as soon as this week sometime, perhaps. I don't know. So guys, there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.